how many athletes have said, when I show up, fighters in particular, I like to go into the ring a little bit hungry. And, it, and it's not just, you know, stay hungry. It's if you, if you got a bunch of food in your system, you're just not as crisp. And there's even physiological, you know, more direct physiological stories to that. If your gut is dealing with some amount of digestive process, then there's blood that's shunted to the gut that's not available to go to the muscles and the, the rest of the circulatory system. So they're, uh, you know, in these uh, shorter distance anaerobic events, a lot of people set personal records, you know, in a fasted state. I don't know that you want to train that way every single time. This is the difference between training days and testing days and whatnot. But this is where you can kind of tweak biology. I, I, I detest the term biohack. Like I, I just, Oh my it, it God, I was going to bring me. that shit up. Hold, so. wait, before I, they make it sound like I wasn't, I was going to write, I wrote that down. Biohacking, <laughs> big question mark. Okay. We'll get back to that, but there's a bunch of things I got I to jump in. The one thing we, we kind of gloss over it and people might not be up to the research as maybe you and I are, but the idea of animal studies and you said something about telomeres. And, and I do want to bring attention to the work of Brett Weinstein on this. Yes. Topic. Yeah. And, have you, are you familiar with that? Uh, yeah. It, there's a, a podcast uh, where Eric Weinstein, his brother, interviews Brett Weinstein. Um, I can't remember the episode. They were talking about the disc. This mm -hmm. information uh, with research and he got into this this thing where brett was researching the lab mice that they were using for all these telomere studies and uh, again well you know it's a, it's a dense paper so i'm going to give it my best but the idea being is that mice tend to have these extraordinarily long telomeres right and then you study mice so you see the telomeres are kind of like the shoestrings at the end of your chromosomes that are counting down your days to be alive or so we thought it, it, at one point um, but what they found is because they were, you know, breeding mice specifically to be in uh, scientific experiments, that they were artificially elongating the telomere lengths by by crazy amounts. Right. And and that might sound like a small problem to people, but it's not because it speaks to the idea of scalability of drug trials. It speaks to the idea of scalability of nutritional trials and people looking at, for example, caloric nutrition and the effect on telomeres. Well, you, a lot of those studies automatically have to be thought of a somewhat biased. Yeah. Because yeah. of this fact. So it, it, I did a, usually each year I have kind of a, a big topical presentation that I do at, at, at conferences and whatnot. And this year the, the topic was longevity, are we trying too hard? And I didn't mention that, that specific telomere information, but I, I found some stuff that really kind of uh, dovetails into that. And uh, I'll, I'll ping you the paper if, if you want to read it. It's really interesting. But it, it makes the case that we have selected these lab mice to eat an obesogenic diet and be obese and be sick and all the rest of that stuff while not allowing them the ability to adapt to it. So we've, so we've put this interesting selection pressure on, on there and, and so the, the researchers made the case, we really can't draw any conclusions from this at all. Mm -hmm. And then when you add in uh, uh, Brett's information around the, the extended telomere length and what the implications are there for toxicity of drugs, of these longevity trials, it, it, interestingly, um, the little bit that's been done in feeding these research animals a species appropriate diet there is no benefit to caloric restriction when these animals are fed a species appropriate diet. And in fact, it shortens their lifespan when, when they're in, in, induced to a, a significant calorie restriction. And this one paper, it's from these British guys and they're just so fucking pithy at the end of this, but it, it, it basically makes the case that the totality of longevity research may be worthless due to this artifact of, of basically you, that the, the calorie restriction is basically benefiting these animals because they're eating less of a shitty diet, not more. And that's it. Like that's the totality of longevity research. Oh, sure. Just like that, eh? just like that years and years of research. And it's one thing is overlooked. 